Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of Guitar Talk with Todd here at Todd BB Music. Thank you so much for checking in and joining me today. Please hit that subscribe button in the lower right hand corner. Help me out. You know I appreciate it. Thank you to each and every one of you who is already on board with me. Find me on Facebook at Todd BB Music. Wanted to come on here and do a quick lesson. A lot of my private lesson students have asked a lot about seventh chords. So this lesson is aimed obviously more at beginners and intermediate players. A lot of them you might know how to play as far as the shapes and stuff, but we're not only going to go over that, we're going to kind of go in depth of how they work and how they're constructed and what that all means. Okay, so let's uh, start with something like a D chord. D major, that's a pretty basic common chord. Everyone knows that. It's used in a million things. It's very useful. But what happens when you turn that into D7? Well, a way to kind of think of it as far as how you're approaching it, when you have just the D chord, just the major chord, you only have three notes that make up that chord, the root, the third, and the fifth. So in this case, the D is the root... The third is going to be F sharp, in this case the major third, and the fifth is going to be A. So we're going through those notes, strumming from the fourth string down here on a D chord. We have a D, there's our root, we have an A, there's our fifth, we have another D, which is back to our root again, and then we have the F sharp which is our major third. So really we only have three notes in that chord even though we're playing four strings because two of them are duplicated. We have two D's in there, they're just different octaves. We have the open fourth string and we have the third fret on the second string. Those are both D's. Okay, so we could lose one of those and we'd still have our D, our root note. So to change that to D7, we're going to lose this D on the third string and move it back here to a C. Well, obviously you have to use a complete different finger combination to do that, but you can see you still have these two notes, the A and the F sharp, the uh, fifth and the third that we were playing with the first and second fingers before, but now we're playing them with the second and third fingers so we can reach back here and get our C. And then even though we got rid of this D, we still have the open fourth string, so that gives us our D. So now we have four notes that make up this D7 chord, the root, D, the fifth, A, the C now, which is the flat seven, it would be called, and then the F sharp, which is the major third. So all of your seventh chords will have a note in them that we're going to refer to as the flat seven. There is a shape called a major seven that uses the major seven instead of the flat seven, and that is a whole different type of a shape, and we're going to have a whole different lesson on that as well. So let's uh, kind of talk about that a little more. Anytime you see something like the D7 chord, it literally means D with a C added in it. And the quick way to kind of figure that out, and after a while you just start to remember, it's like anything. But if we start with our root note on the 1, which it always would be, and just go through 7 in the musical alphabet, D... E, F, G, there's no H, so we go back to A, B, C. So C is the seventh note. So D7 literally means D chord with a C added to it, because that seven is C. Um, like I said, though, to properly refer to it or reference it, you always want to call that note the flat seven, because you don't want people confusing it with the major seven, which is, like I was just saying, a whole different kind of chord. So... Uh, again, four notes always make up your seventh chords. Bar chords are great to get those down and have them going, and we're going to have a whole other lesson on that. I'll put the links below. Check out my two-part series on major and minor bar chords, which are fantastic to know, especially beginners, intermediates should all have those down and be working with those for sure. But then they spin off into a million other shapes and chords and sevenths are one of those we're gonna have a lesson coming up on bar chord shapes with seventh chords but for today i want to just focus on open chord forms so let's kind of look at these uh starting i always tell all my students to do this instead of going 
you know, scatterbrain all over the place, which is fine, but to have a little bit of a system going, try to always go just A through G. So start with A. It's always good to kind of play the major chord. So you can either play your A with one, two, three, or two, three, four, and now play that A7. So if you play it with one, two, three, your A chord, you want to just lift off your second finger, and that's going to add that open third string there, which will give you the G. Because again, if you count through the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, so G would be the seventh in the key of A, so an A chord needs to add a G. Fastest way to do that is lift off your second finger and add that open third string G. And that's going to give you your A seventh chord. So now you have four notes. You have A, which is the root, E, which is the fifth, G, which is the flat seventh, C sharp, which is the major third, and then we have another E which is just another fifth in there. Okay, B7 is going to be like this. So that one's probably the hardest one. I always call that the Doors chord. <laughs> uh, if you ever hear the end of People Are Strange. From the Doors, that ends with that. That's what that last chord, a lot of my students will say, what is that chord that he's playing at the end of People Are Strange? It's just a B7 right there, and that's a perfect uh, song for hearing that chord and put to use. So we have B, which is our root, E flat, which is our major third, A, which is our seventh in this case, open B, so go ahead and hit that open second string right in the middle of all that, and then you're going to put your pinky down there on the second fret of the first string to get your F sharp. And that F sharp is going to be our fifth there on the first string. Okay, uh, let's go on to C major and to turn that into C7. That's a real easy one. Just go ahead and do your standard C shape like you always do. And we're just going to add the pinky right there underneath the third finger in the same fret. In this case, the third fret. But your pinky is going to be on the third string. And that's going to give you a C7. So again, now we have the note C, which is our root. E, which is our major third. B flat with the pinky, which is the flat seven. And then another C, which is our root note. And then you can go ahead and do the open first string again if you want to. That just gives us another E, another third. So that's C7. D to D7, we just analyzed that one a little while ago, so we're doing that. We've got the D, open fourth string, we've got the second fret on the third string, first fret on the second string, and then second fret on the first string with the third finger playing the F sharp. So that's our D7. Let's look at E7 for a second. So E7, and see if you can figure some of these out if you just sit there and go E. Remember, your root note is always going to be one, whatever the name of the chord is, and then just go through the musical alphabet. E, F, G, back to A, B, C, D. So you're thinking to yourself, okay, I need to add a D to an E chord somehow. So get your E chord on and just kind of think about it. The easiest way would be lift off that third finger, and that's going to allow the open fourth string to ring out, which is your D, so that's like your flat seven. And again, we have no shortages of E. <laughs> In an E chord, we have the open first string, the open top string, and then we also have the note that you're holding on the fourth string second fret with the third finger. So we can get rid of that one, and that adds the D there, and that gives us a nice E, E7. So again, our notes are open, E, B, which is the fifth on the second fret of the fifth string, open fourth string, which is our flat seven, first fret on the third string, which is our major third, another B with the open second string, which is our fifth again, just another octave, and then another E, which is the open first string, which is our root, root note. F. There's a bunch of different ways to play this one. Like I said, we're going to have an upcoming episode on bar chords. 
But to keep this easier and more in the vein of open chords, we're going to do this one this way. So we're going to actually be strumming just from the fourth string down. What you're going to do first is just lay your first finger across the first four strings in the first fret. And that's called barring, and you'll see that on the diagram I'm going to put up here. That's exactly how that'll look. So you want to get that nice and flat across there. If it's kind of a little bit difficult for you when you add this, the A, the second fret on the third string, which would be our major third. If that's a little bit hard to do, start out with just trying to get only that bar on and see if you can just strum the first four strings and get those to ring out you know, clear. A lot of times, instead of just going as a, you know, across all of them, try to separate them and do one at a time as, as an arpeggio, that would be called. And make sure nothing sounds like, you know, like that, like a duck. <laughs> if you hear that, then that means you got to get a little bit more pressure going on there. And that's usually a uh, you know, combination of pressure with your thumb and your finger together on the back of the neck there. Just press to get that nice and clear. Then, once that's ringing, just go ahead and drop this second finger onto the second fret of the third string to add the A. And that gives us a nice F7 chord. So the notes there are first fret on the fourth string, which is our flat seven, E flat. And then we have A on the second fret of the third string, which is our major third, C on the first fret of the second string, which is our fifth, and then F on the first fret of the first string, which is our root note in this case. And that gives us an F7 chord. All right, let's take a look at G. G, you can play it either this way with one, two, three. Some people play it with two, three, four. For the sake of this chord, we're going to try to play it with two, three, four. If you play it with one, two, three, I know this is going to kind of be a pain, and we'll talk about that in a second. But, okay, the first thing we want to do, we have G. So, again, A, B, C, D, E, F, F. So, we need to add an F to a G chord. So, again, if we look at our notes there, G, B, D, G, B, G. We have a lot of Gs in there, so we can get rid of one of them. So, we're going to take this one and move it back to here, and there's our F. So to do that in combination with the rest of the chord, if you're playing it with two, three, four, just keep these two up there, lose the pinky, and drop this right down there onto the first fret of the first string, and that gives you a nice G7 chord. Very similar to a C, uh, so if you can play your C chord, that's another trick you can kind of do to get into that. Take your C chord, just lift these two fingers up, and then drop this first finger down, and now you can strum all six strings. A lot of my younger beginner students, if that's too hard, or they're used to playing G this way, and they obviously can't reach back with the first, what I'll tell them to do is just lose this and put only the first finger on and just strum from the fourth down. And that's still got all of your notes. There's your D, which is your fifth. There's your G. The open third string is the root. There's your B, which is the major third. And there's your F, which is your flat seven. But in a full form like that, now we have G on the top, which is the root note. Fifth string, second fret, we have B, which is the major third open fourth string which is D and that gives us the fifth another root note with the open third string G open second string B and then we have the flat seven there on the first fret of the first string that one you can strum all six and that's it so that's a good thing to do with any of your chords when you're use learning them like that is just go A through G. So to review that, we have A7. Um, and again, I didn't talk about that before. If you're playing that with two, three, four, then just lift the third up. As long as you're getting that open third string in there to get that flat seven in G, that's what you want. So either got that or that if we're doing it with one, two, three. Okay, so we have A7, B7, the Doors chord. 
C7, we got the pinky onto the third string, third fret, D7, which was the very first one we talked about, E7, where we're going to lift off the third finger and let the open fourth string ring out, there's our E7, F7, like we say, get the bar on first, then add the second finger on the second fret of the third string and just strum from the fourth string down don't strum the top two so there's f7 and then finally g7 which is like a big giant c chord but move to different strings and you can strum all six on that one so uh if there's anything else to kind of talk about with open seventh chords they just add a bluesier sound to them to anything um let's just say like the A chord. If you're strumming A and then you just add that G, you can hear that come in and then go away. And a lot of times they're interchangeable, not always, but with a lot of you know, rock and pop and country music and blues. A lot of my students will bring chord charts in that are in jazz band or something a lot of times they get something thrown at them and they might be like panicking like oh i gotta get this chord down for the next by tomorrow what am i gonna do i'm always like you know i'm not saying it's right and don't you learn your chords but if you see something come up that says like say g c d7 so you had g c and d7 and back to G, you could just go G, C, D, and back to G. They're pretty interchangeable. The seventh is going to have a bluesier sound than the straight major chord is. And like I said, I'm, I wouldn't be doing this lesson if I didn't want you to learn them. But, um, it, it, you know, you can pretty much, if it says D7 and you just play a D, it's, it's really not the end of the world. It's not going to stand out that much. If it says A7 and you play an A, it's not going to stand out that much. But that's not the point. The point is to learn them so you can use them and they do stand out because they do have a great sound to them. Uh, real quick, a uh, classic thing to remember with like a country progression standard uh, in a 1-4-5 Check out my lesson on the major scale. I kind of explain all that in more in depth too. I'll put those links below as well. But let's say, a, going back to G, C, D again, G would be the one chord. Uh, C would be the four, because again, G, A, B, C is four. D, G, A, B, C, D would be the five. So G is the one, C is the four, D is the five. So there's our one, there's our four with C, and there's our five with D. Always make the five chord a seventh chord in a standard country progression, and it'll sound, you hear a million traditional, especially country songs, use that. So instead of going G, C, back to the one G, and then D, try going with the seventh G, C, G, and I'll put a seventh in. And that works in any, let's say we're doing it in A. A would be the one, D would be the four, back to the one, E would be the five, but if I do a seven, A, D, A, now let's use E seven. It just sounds more, and of course they're using a ton of blues, and seventh chords are just great, but um, that's uh, just a real quick lesson on there. Uh, about 20 minutes, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully that um, helps you out, especially always, you know, aiming at beginners and intermediate players with this one. Uh, but definitely get those down. Try to do that A through G that way, getting all of your seventh chords. And, and just try to hear that difference. Try to play the major chord and then add the seventh. And then go back to the major and do that with any like D, D7, or G, G7. Just a real useful, helpful thing to do. So hopefully uh, that helps a lot of our intermediate and beginner players out there. 
Uh, keep on going. If you guys have any questions, comment below. I'll definitely get back to you. Please hit that subscribe button and help me out. You know I appreciate it. I, like I said, thank you to everyone who's already on board with me. Find me on Facebook at Todd BB Music. And we will see you all again. Stay safe and love your dogs. Take care.